of it. Let's take one, two, three. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all here to St. Patrick Church of Myrna 
and to our funeral mass where we'll be honoring Adam Denman. The mass will begin with the blessing of Adam's body and the placing of the funeral pall at the baptismal font, which is at the entrance of the church. After the family has all been um, escorted in, we will sing Be Not Afraid. All of the music and the responses um, for today's Mass are in your insert, so you'll just have the song in there, and that will be Be Not Afraid. Let's please observe a moment of silence as we prepare to celebrate this sacred liturgy. I invite the congregation to please stand and turn to face the baptismal font. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Adam, Duane, Denman died with Christ and rose with him to a new life. May he now share with him an eternal life. I'd ask Joe and Danette, Justin and Tricia to come forward as they place over the body of their son and brother the funeral pall that represents his baptismal God. May all who are buried with Christ in the death of baptism rise also in the newness of life. shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in If you pass through rain 
raging waters in the sea. You shall not drown if you walk amid the burning flames. You shall not be harmed if you stand before the power of hell and death is at your side. Know that I am. And let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Adam, whom you have called to journey to you. And since he hoped and he believed in you, grant that he may be led to our true homeland to delight in everlasting joys. Your Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Mike should be seated as we receive God's holy word. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The just man, though he die early, shall be at rest. For the age that is honorable comes not with passing of time, nor can it be measured in terms of years. He who pleased God was loved. He who lived among sinners was transported. Having become perfect in a short while, he reached the fullness of a long career, for his soul was pleasing to the Lord. Therefore he sped him out of the midst of wickedness. But the people saw and did not understand, nor they, did they take this into account, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. This is the word of the Lord. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death Death, 
I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O oh God. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers, proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling, and my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit and power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet we do speak of wisdom to those who are mature, but not a wisdom of this age, not of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages for our glory and which none of the rulers of age knew, for if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what eye has not seen, and ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me, because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of the Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. We just heard from the Book of Wisdom. The just man, though he die early, shall be at rest. Because grace and mercy are with his Holy One, and his care is with the elect. And then the words of our Lord in the Gospel that Deacon Mike just proclaimed to us. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me but I should raise it up on the last day. These words of sacred scripture summarize our prayers for you, Joe and Danette, Justin and Tricia, rest of Adam's family, the friends and of the Denman family. You know that you have been lifted up in our prayers over these last several days. We are grateful, and I mean that. We're grateful that we have this time to pray with you, to pray for you, and to remember Adam. Adam's life and now his death has touched all of us. But most of all, you, Annette and Joe, there is pain of being a parent and losing a son. But with Adam, there has been much, much more. You have cared for Adam for many years. You have supported him, and you have parented him as best you could. So we thank you. Probably like all parents, you might be saying to yourself, I wish we could do more. But what you did do, I know it wasn't easy at times for Adam, you did it out of love. And I know you also had many joyful and hopeful times with Adam. And the same could be said for you, Justin and Tricia. Thank you for being good siblings, supporting your brother. I came into Adam's life in June of 1991. He was on his way again to St. Jude. And I just met Joe and Danette, even though I had known them earlier. And I was beginning my years here as pastor of St. Patrick Church of Myrna. So having just met this young man, I didn't know much about his condition. But I was aware that it was serious. And like many of you, I prayed for Adam a lot, for the Denman family. I got updates like all of us did, and rejoiced at the progress that he was making, as well as hearing about the struggles he was having. Probably going through grade school and then high school, I remember my one-on-ones with, I had with Adam a number of times. I have to tell you, I was overwhelmed at his spirituality as a child and as a teen. We might remember him as being quiet, at least I did. And he was very reflective and very deep as a junior high and high school student. I was also amazed at what he understood about life 
about suffering and about a higher power, God, in his life. I tried to encourage him many times to reflect and to share his experience, and I think he did with those who were very close to him. The cover of the worship aid that most of you have, there's one picture of what Adam experienced in this life through his suffering. Happiness can be found even in the darkness of times if only one remembers to turn to the light. What a profound statement. At the head of Adam's body is the Easter candle. It reminds us through the grace of baptism that Adam was brought into the light, the light of Christ. The funeral pall represents his baptism. He has been clothed in Christ. And blessing his body at the beginning of this liturgy, we are reminded that he was washed clean through the grace of baptism. And as I will pray the preface of the Eucharistic prayer this morning, we will say, indeed, for your faithful Lord, life has changed. It is not ended. When this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. That's our faith. That's what we believe as a Christian. We want to embrace that gift and that promise of the resurrection as we remember Adam and celebrate this Eucharist. It is our faith, which is a gift from God, that sustains us, who will keep us together and give us the peace, especially when we don't have answers in this life. After one of Adam's many surgeries, when he was five years old, he told his mom that Jesus was in the chair in the corner with him in the hospital room. That was a gift to Adam, to experience that moment. And it was a time of hope for Danette. It is most appropriate that we have gathered here at St. Patrick Church of Miranda to celebrate Adam's life and his journey of faith. As Danette said, this parish was their parish even before it got approved to be built by the bishop. Approval had to come from then Bishop O'Rourke for the St. Clair families to officially join St. Patrick Church of Myrna. This is where there was a 24-hour vigil for Adam in 1984 before he had his first surgery. And it was a, and it was a parish that was small enough for them to have their pew. And everyone knew when you were there, or when you weren't there. Make your own conclusions with that, okay? <laughs> Adam made his first communion at this parish. It's where he grew up, came to know Jesus, and where the whole family learned what it meant to be a community of faith. And there are many, many prayer warriors that will who are gathered here that will remember 1984. Adam was just not about physical struggles and suffering. In fact, I know that he didn't like that attention, the attention that was put on him because of his illness. He was a great hardwood installer for many years until his body wouldn't allow him to do it anymore. This is where his artistic abilities allowed him to shine. He was proud of the work and would take time with each install, paying close attention to every detail. He later, later attended classes and got certified as a flooring inspector and worked with his dad, Joe. It's no secret that Adam had a lot of tattoos. Most people don't know why he had so many tattoos. Yes, he's artistic, but he got his first one to hide his scars. He was proud of the last one, the St. Jude Hospital logo. 
He got that on the 30th anniversary of his bone marrow transplant, which happened to be exactly one month ago to the day, his burial today. We all have our ideas and how we measure the success of life. We all have our own ways of defining what is a full life. For a Christian, a full life would be defined as how we were able to love and to be loved. Using that measurement of a full life, I think Adam Denman hit the mark. As Danette put it to me when she told me that Adam had died, our pain is as big as Adam's heart. We all know that Adam had a big heart. And a desire to connect with this life as fully as he was able. He fought for life. I see that the real success of Adam Denman's life is how he ministered to his family and to all of us, his friends, and the countless number of people who knew his situation and who prayed for him. As it was said many already in Many, many people prayed for him. Adam was the reason that people turned to God. Remember that. Adam was a reason that we turned to God. Maybe that's why Adam did live as long as he did. So more and more people would pray for him. More and more people would speak to God on his behalf. Again, in the words of our Lord from the Gospel of John, for it is the will of my Father that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. It seems to me that our Lord could, couldn't be any more clear in what we believe and what we remember as we entrust Adam's soul to our Lord today. May you be at peace, Adam. Thank you for the gift of your life and the love that you shared with us. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon him now and forever. Amen. I invite you to please stand. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for us, the Church. Confident that God hears the voices of all who trust in the Lord, we now join our prayers to his. For Adam, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Adam, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And for the family and friends of Adam who seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain and dispel the darkness of doubt that comes from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For healing and comfort of all children and their families who are being treated through St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us here who have been assembled in faith, strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of the Lord's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of our souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated now as the altar is prepared for the Eucharist, 
The gifts of bread and wine will be brought forward by Adam's godfather and confirmation sponsor. I would invite you to join in singing Hosea. Come back to me with all your heart. Don't let fear keep us apart. Trees do bend, though straight and tall, so must we to others call. I invite you to stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the may Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for, your servant, for the salvation of your servant Adam, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find him to be a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in him the hope of the blessed resurrection has dawned. Those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life has changed. It is not ended. When this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we now sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
invite you to kneel or be seated, whichever is your custom. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. You never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper had ended, he took the chalice, giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, filled with this Holy Spirit, we may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may attain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Patrick and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all in the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis our Pope, Daniel our Bishop, Louis Brother Bishop, the Order of Bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Adam, whom you have called from this world to yourself, and grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To all our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we will become like you for all ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him.
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. invite you to stand and at the Savior's command informed by divine teaching we now dare to say our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And you may kneel or be seated. The distribution of Holy Communion will ask you to come down the center aisle and return by the side aisles. For those of you who are not of the Catholic faith, if you wish to come forward in the communion procession, you are welcome to. When you approach either Deacon Michael or myself, just simply cross your arms this way. We'll be happy to say a prayer and give you a blessing. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
I would invite you to join in the communion hymn, You Are Mine. I will come to you in the silence. I will lift you from all your fear. You will hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be still and know I am here. I am hope for all who are hopeless. I am eyes for all who long to see. In the shadows of the night, I will be your light. Come and rest in me. Do not be afraid, I am I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. I am strength for Despairing, healing for the ones who dwell in shame. All the blind will see, the lame will all run free, and all will know my name. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. I am the word that all to freedom. I am the peace the world cannot give. I will call your name, embracing all your pain. Stand up now, walk and live. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine.
gentle woman, quiet light, morning star, so strong and bright, gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom. Just love. You were chosen by the Father. You were chosen for the Son. You were chosen. Quiet light, morning star, so strong and bright, gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom, teach us love. So strong and bright, gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom, teach us love. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Adam may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Before our final prayers here at the church, I would like to extend an invitation on behalf of this parish community and the family to a luncheon that will be served in the uh, Shamrock Hall, which is near the other end of this building. Um, the luncheon will be served uh, after the burial at the cemetery. Again, you're all invited to gather and continue to tell our stories of Adam and our experiences. <clears throat> Before we go our separate ways, we take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. We know, we know one day we shall joyfully greet Adam again, when the love of Christ that conquers all things destroys even death itself. We'll just have a moment of silent prayer. And now as I incense the body of Adam as a sign of blessing and preparation for burial, I would ask you to join in the song of farewell it's in your program, the song of farewell. Come to his aid, O oh saints of God. Come meet him, angels of
Christ who called you take you home and angels lead you to Abraham receive his soul O holy ones present him now to God most high give him eternal my Redeemer lives. The last day I shall rise again. Receive his soul, O holy ones. Present him now to God most Into your hands, Father of mercy, we now commend our brother Adam, in the sure and certain hope that together of all who died in Christ, he will be raised up on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings that you have bestowed upon Adam in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with all the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us. Listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith till we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace now, we take the body of Adam's place of rest. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When my way grows so drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When the darkness appears and the night draws me near and the day is past and gone, Take my hand, precious Lord. 